Hello, this is the Animation Fanatic, and um, I'm here once again to talk to you about a non-animation item. Today, I'm going to talk about a very special book called Angel Fall. Now, what is, what is Angel Fall, you might ask? Well, Angel Fall, besides being one of my Christmas presents, um, is an e-book. It's now been converted into a print book, so if you want to order it, um, you, you can get it. Which is a, a YA novel. It is, it is post-apocalyptic, dystopian. And um, so what you might be thinking at first is, uh, oh, it's just another Hunger Games copy. Someone's trying to cash in. <laughs> well, maybe they are. Maybe sh the author is trying to cash in. But if she is, she's doing a very good job. Because the book Angel Fall on its own is actually very good and very interesting. And uh, while not quite as good as the Hunger Games, it is a very well-written um, piece of literature. Now, let me give you um, some basic story uh, in this. I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything, or I'm going to try not to spoil anything, but I'm, I'm going to give you some basic story. Uh, I encourage you to read the book, and yeah, ch check it out. But let me get into why in a second. So, uh, when the book starts, humanity has been wrecked, basically, because angels, I'm not kidding here, angels have come down and started destroying everything. Um... The, the story is, is set in San Francisco, not San Francisco, in Northern California, just north of San Francisco. And, uh, you know, it's been several months since the angel Gabriel appeared to humans and was actually killed, um, interestingly enough. And uh, I'll, I'll get to this in a moment. You find out a lot of interesting things about angels in this book, but I'll get to that in a moment. Um, and the angels have just ran, run riot all over the humanity and just destroyed... Every, everything. So, the world is in chaos, there's no government, gangs rule the streets, but our story focuses in on a young girl, mm -hmm. um, yeah, Hunger Games reference, Hunger Games much, a young girl, a young 15-year-old girl, I, I believe she's 15, she's either 15 or 16, um, or she's 17, she's in, the, she's in that age, she's, she's pretty young, she's, yeah, she's not, a young teenage girl who is trying to keep her family alive, um, difficulty, her mother is actually crazy. Her mother's got some, some kind of mental illness. Um, it's not schizophrenia, it's just, she's just got a mental illness. And she, she thinks she talks to demons, she does a lot of things that don't make any sense. Uh, she's actually fairly dangerous. And it's hinted she might have even been responsible for, for our main character's sister's injury. Now, our main character... Her name's Penryn. It, apparently, she's named after an interstate in San Francisco, in Northern California. Um, her sister, Paige, is wheelchair bound again because of a previous in injury. So Penryn's got to keep them alive. Only problem is that after seeing an angel, because the angels do come down, after seeing an angel getting his wings torn off and trying to help him a little bit, or at least hurt the other angels, um, Penryn's sister, Paige, gets kidnapped by the angels. And now she and the angel who got his wings torn off have to go and have to go and save her and retrieve the angel's wings. So they start a fun-filled road trip. Fun-filled, <laughs> fun-filled <laughs> road trip <laughs> to San Francisco in order to see what they can do. Um, now this this book might sound a little bit weird to you, but believe me, it is very worth it. It does it does have this sort of strangeness to it. Especially when you think about angels, you usually think about angels as being good and uh, being, uh, you know, kind and loving and caring. But this is a completely different take on it. They are very destructive. They can be very violent and vindictive. Um, and, and you you do learn a lot about them in this in this book. I won't spoil everything um, here, but you learn a lot about their commands. You learn some stuff about their command structure, how they work and operate different types of angels, differences between angels and demons, because there, there is a difference. There is, there is, um, it's implied there is a hell in this universe, and there is uh, a, a heaven, and there are demons. Um, you learn stuff that kind of connects to the history of the Bible, about the Nephilim, you know, angels and humans, offspring, um, about how what angels think and believe. It's really interesting, and they only give you bits and pieces of it, so you're, like, really eager to get more information about these creatures. But besides that, the plot is the plot is decent. It's mostly, it's kind of a road trip story as well as just some wandering. Yeah, kind of some road trips, some wandering, and, uh, you know, finding your, 
Finding Your Family, Bridge Between Worlds. Nothing we haven't seen before, but it's done decently well. Penryn is a very, uh, our main character is a very engaging um, girl. She's a very uh, nice, interesting character. Uh, she's She can take care of herself because of self-defense classes. Nice explanation. But she is um, not not quite as whiny, I would say, as Katniss does get at some points. She takes everything in stride. She plans. She plots. And you just can't help but like her and her struggle to find her sister. You feel sorry for her. You care for her. And, uh, you know, you struggle along with her as she tries to help and save her family and do what she can for them. Um, Raphael, Raphael, the main angel, or Raph as he's called, uh, without his wings, is at first not entirely likable. Actually, throughout the book, he can be very unlikable. But you do start to see and enjoy the connection between him and Penryn. Although some of it is a little bit like, oh, I can't do, he's hot, I, I like him. Uh, but you'll, you'll see that when you read the book. Um, yeah, the plot, like I said, it isn't the strongest. You've seen stuff like this, you've seen that before. But the world and the different things that they put into this is just so strange that it mixes it up in just the right way. Um, I really like how they kind of threw these little curveballs into what could have been a very generic story um, about angels and humans and different worlds interacting. Uh, so, what would I give it? I, I'd give it a pro probably an eight out of ten, a nine out of eight and a half out of ten. I would highly recommend you to go see it, uh, not see it, to read it. <laughs> but you will be able to see it one day because it is going to be made into a movie. I don't know when, but it will be made into one. So I recommend you go and read the book now. There's a second book out. I have not seen that book. I have not read that book. But, yeah, I would encourage you to do that. If you love dystopia, if you love YA, if you love just kind of odd fantasy, this is the book for you. It's actually, when describing the plot, you could almost mistake it for an anime because it is very anime-esque. It's very much like an anime. And um, it's... It's got sort of that odd strangeness to it that an anime would have. So, like I said, check it out, and, uh, yeah, tell me what you think.